it's um, the duplicitous person, they will hide. They will hide the truth. They don't want to reveal the truth. They hide the truth. They won't actually open up what is the, the facts, what is actually the situation. So this is duplicitous. You ask somebody, did you chant your rounds? Oh yeah, 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 I chanted, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe a month ago you chanted, in the last month you haven't chanted. <laughs> this is duplicitous. We don't really open up, we don't tell the truth. Are you following the principles? Yeah, 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 I'm following. Yeah. And we're not following. So that's duplicitous. So how do we avoid duplic duplicity? We avoid that by revealing our heart, by speaking the truth. How can we help somebody who is duplicitous? You cannot. Because they're not, they're not straightforward. They're not telling the truth. So how can we help them? Very difficult. Can, what can you do? Do you understand, Mary Jane? Yes, my Thank you, Mary. Yes. devotee care and detachment because uh, in, in its con uh, a lot of focus is on devotee care um, at the same but, but uh, my question is that while you are providing the uh, devotee care how can you practice detachment because somewhere there will be an element of attachment in the in the process and another pro uh, aspect is that if someone is um, having this uh, feeling of detachment like, uh, um, then how do you uh, contribute towards devotee care? Because, so this is my question actually. Well, we have to understand what we mean when we talk about detachment. We talk, detachment means detachment from material sense gratification. Detachment from anything not in relationship to Krishna. So, when we talk about devotee care, devotees are... Krishna's devotees, they're Krishna's servants. So taking care of them is, that is part of devotional service. And, and we're not, we shouldn't think, uh, oh, this is not detachment, taking care of the body, taking care of devotee. No, that's all in line with devotional service. So you have to understand that the devotees are very dear to Lord Krishna, and by taking care of them, then you're pleasing Lord Krishna. You give pleasure to Krishna by taking care. It's, it's very important for us to take care of the devotees. Detachment doesn't mean we neglect everybody and everything. That, that kind of detachment, that is the Mayavadi detachment. They want to give up the world. They give up everything and everyone and, and go away from the world. But our devotion, our detachment is yukta vairagya. Right? Yukta vairagya means detachment in relation to Krishna. That we, we give up the attachment to the material, but we become attached to the spiritual. And everything in relation to Krishna is spiritual. So taking care of devotees is a spiritual activity. And Krishna says, one who, is, one who is, takes care of the devotees, you become very dear to Lord Krishna. All right, we'll go ahead. What are the 18 qualities to be cultivated by a jnani, described in verses 7 to 10? Okay, so here's a there's a little exercise for you. You can take a few minutes 
to go through these verses, 7 to 10, and write down the 18 qualities to be cultivated by a jnani. Give you a couple of minutes to go through verses 7 to 10. Okay, what are some of the qualities for the jnani? Satchivrat Prabhu? Hare Krishna? Yes. Yes, some hands are up. Let's see. Hare Krishna? Maharaj, Dhanavad? Hare Krishna. Uh, Give me one quality. Yes, Sarva Bhuta Samatvena. One has to see every living entity with equality. Okay. One quality, see everyone equally. Yes, another quality? Yes, Brahmacharyana. Brahmacharya, celibacy. Yeah. 
Okay. And Mona. No. Okay, we just want one, one person, one quality. Don't see any more. Let's hear other people. Nita book, eat as much as required. Yes, don't overeat. Right? How much you should eat? How much is required to eat? Uh, to keep the body and soul together. We yeah, should. just enough to keep body and soul together, right? You have to remember that today. If you go for the feast, for Lord Nichananda's, don't eat too much. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. <laughs> okay. Another quality? Maharaj. One, one person. Compassionate. What? Karuna. Compassionate. Compassionate, okay. That's, I think there's four, five qualities, right? One more? Maharaj, uh, be grave and ex execute external activities. Be grave. A devotee is serious, right? A devotee is not just joking around, playing around, he's serious. Be grave. It's a serious business to become Krishna conscious. Sometimes Prabhupada would say something and devotees would laugh at it and, and Prabhupada would say, why are you laughing? He said, it's very serious. You know, Prabhupada would be describing some of the foolish things which take place in the world and some, if the devotees laugh, Prabhupada would ask them, why are you laughing? Very, this is serious. Okay, yes? Upper Sangha, no intimate... Uh... Relationship connection. With who? No intimate connection with uh, materialistic uh, one who are not devoted. Oh, we shouldn't have mat mat association with materialistic people. With materialistic people. Someone said a jnani, the, the jnani particularly, they like to go away from the world. They like to be more introverted. Why? Maybe that because you have to do meditation. If you're doing meditation, you don't want people disturbing you all the time. You can't meditate if people are always calling you, talk, you're always talking on your mobile phone, there's always people coming and talking to you. Big disturbance. And so Jnani he li he likes to be a little bit private, just go away, then, then he can concentrate more on studying, reading, developing his realization. So he just go away from people, giving up the association of worldly minded people. Okay, yes? Vivikta Sarana, Vivikta Sarana means secluded places they should stay? Yes, prefers to stay in a secluded place. Or we would say we, we like to be where the devotees stay, be staying with the devotees. If you have to live with all kinds of worldly people, you know, they have their televisions going all day and night, and then they sometimes they're playing mundane pop music or rock music, and sometimes they're cooking non-vegetarian foodstuffs and you get the horrible smell coming. You know, everybody lives in apartment buildings nowadays, so many places they have apartment buildings. And if you're a devotee, you have to live in an apartment. People upstairs or downstairs or next door, they're cooking meat or, or they have a dog. And, or, yeah, so many things they disturb you with. So it's nice, particularly for the jnani, they want to get away from the world, find a secluded place, find an ashram where they can get proper peace. And sometimes, you know, we wake up early in the morning, people complain, oh, you wake up so early, I could hear you, oh, you wake me up, you know. They think, you know, our, our time schedule is so different from ordinary people. 
And so it's better to be away from the worldly minded people. Yes, another quality. What's that? Devi Bhutanya Dasana. This is, he does not see anything but Krishna. He doesn't see anything but Krishna. No, this is a very advanced devotee, eh? very advanced yogi. Doesn't see anything except Krishna, sees everything in relation to Krishna. Okay, something else? Whatever comes of its own accord. So he ex accepts everything, whatever comes. Sometimes there will be problems coming in the life, he will accept it. And sometimes success will come. He, he does not rejoice, he doesn't lament. He remains equipoised. And success or failure, he will remain the same. He doesn't rejoice, he doesn't lament. He controls the mind. Sometimes so, much, so many difficulties, so many problems, and other times everything is so nice. So devotee is very controlled and tolerant doesn't get thrown off. Okay? A devotee is Atmavan. Uh, he uh, should always remain uh, situated in a spiritual position. Uh, always to stay in a place which is amenable to uh, practicing Krishna consciousness. Yes. Right. It's important to get, to stay near the devotees. When people move away, sometimes they, we hear devotees say, Oh, we're living far away, we can't come from Mongolarti. We feel very sorry. They're living so far away, they don't have association. It must be very difficult for them to maintain Krishna consciousness. And so it's, it's, it, it does make a di big difference to be able to live near the devotees, or around the, the temple, in the community of devotees. It's a great benefit. Yes, another one? The Dharmena Bali is offering all results to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Offering all? All results of the work to the Supreme Personality All results, Godhead. yeah. So devotee doesn't think himself to be the doer. He thinks whatever success comes or failures come, this is Krishna's mercy. Krishna is a doer. I'm just an instrument in the hands of Krishna. So that is the thinking of a devotee, to give the, understand the results are for Krishna. I am just an instrument in his service. Don't be attached to the results. Don't try to enjoy the results of the work. So that is real detachment. So the Gyani also has this. Yes, any more? Mist book should not eat more than what is necessary. He control his eating. Yeah, we had that one. Somebody gave that earlier. Maharaj, Shanta, peacefulness, the devotee should not be agitated. Okay, peaceful, Shanti, yeah. Um, shanti, Shanti. Atma one. Pe being peaceful, just one, one at a time, being peaceful, we have the peace formula, of course from Bhagavad Gita, we were just hearing, remembering Krishna is the proprietor, Krishna is the enjoyer, Krishna is the best friend. This is the best way to be peaceful, to maintain detachment. Right? Another one? My prayer. Forgiveness. Quality of forgiveness. Okay, so being able to forgive people, that's very important quality. Of material world, we don't find people to be very forgiving. But a devotee should be very forgiving. We see great devotees, Haridas Thakur being beaten in the marketplace, 
he prayed, don't let these people suffer because they're beating me. Lord Jesus Christ being crucified, he also prayed, to, 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 he said, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. So, being forgive, forgiving, don't criticize people, but don't criticize the, the, the people, criticize the, the, the sin. Judge, don't judge the sinner, judge the sin. It's the, the, the habits that people are unfortunate. And so we have to be able to forgive them and go on with our life. We forgive them and we try also to teach them, to educate them, to show them a better standard of living. Prabhupada said like that, he said, if I have done anything, I've given a better life for so many people. Okay, any others? Anubhati Chadeki Asmi, a true one, Asat Abraham. He does not identify himself with the body and thus they have no attraction for bodily relationship. Okay, not attached to the body and no attraction to bodily relationships. Yeah. Devotees should not be neglectful. Prabhupada explains devotee is not neglectful. We have some bodily relationships. This is a responsibility. We shouldn't just give them up. That would be, that's Mariada Vairagya, monkey renunciation. Some people, they get married, they have children, they go away and leave. They leave the wife with the children to take, they don't take care. But it's monkey renunciation. It's a responsibility. So we shouldn't be like monkeys. Monkeys, they have so many wives, so many children. They don't take care of any of them. Yes, any more? To transcend the three stage of material consciousness, Yeah, we want to transcend the material consciousness, but how to do it? The different qualities, different activities are being described. Nibrita buddhi avasthata by realizing knowledge of spirit and matter. Okay, so knowledge of spirit and matter, yeah. This is, we're hearing about jnani, the jnani, he has to cultivate knowledge. He has to understand what is spirit, what is matter. And for a devotee, this is also important, right? One who's a bhakti yogi, he's also a karma yogi, he's also a jnana yogi, he's also a dhyana yogi. All the lower levels of yoga are there within the yoga ladder. And so if we're on bhakti yoga, then the qualities of the other yogis are also there within our bhakti yoga. So the jnana yogi, these qualities, these activities are also there with with that they're included within our bhakti yoga. But in the devotional manner. We say don't eat too much means don't eat anything which is not prasada. Eat prasada, that's important. L live alone, live with the devotees. That's like living alone if you live, if you live with devotees. Okay, any other qualities? Atmadrik. Meaning? Self-realize, Maharaj. What? Self-realized. Self-realized, yes. Okay, that's the goal, to become self-realized. All right? Okay, we'll go ahead. Let me go back to the PowerPoint here. Okay, so we describe these different qualities which are mentioned, verses 7 to 10. Are you all seeing the PowerPoint? Have you got it? Yes, yes, my yes, my Okay, so. Yes, my Suri Dham Sarva Bhutanam, right? The best friend of everyone. Prabhupada writes, this is oh, text number four, we're going back. The power of friendship is limited. Although one claims to be a friend, he cannot be a friend 
unlimitedly. There are an unlimited number of living entities and our resources are limited. Therefore, we cannot be of any real benefit to the people in general. The best service to the people in general is to awaken them to Krishna consciousness so that they may know that the Supreme Enjoyer, the Supreme Proprietor and the Supreme Friend is Krishna. Then this illusory dream of lording it over material nature will vanish. All right? So the best service is to bring people to Krishna consciousness. If we are thinking like that, then this will help us to remember Krishna is our real friend. And we are simply servants. Don't try to exploit. So we heard about the conditioned souls and the liberated soul. Now a liberated soul realizes the super soul and the super souls, the super soul's characteristics are described. Maybe you can remember some characteristics of the super soul from Bhagavad Gita. Right? What are some characteristics of the super soul? Observer and permitter. Overseer. Supervises. Oh, the, the super soul is overseer and the permitter, right? Yeah. Okay, those are two good qualities. Any another quality? Witness. What? Be the witness. The witness. witness. The witness to everything. Yeah, he always said overseer. That's like a witness. Anything else? What do you remember? Advaya, without a second. One without a second? Uh-huh. Advaya. He guides the soul. He guides the soul. Is that stated somewhere? Where does this, where does that where is that stated that he guides the soul? Really? Give me the statement, give me the verse. Suvarna Varno. Where? Which verse? In some Upanishad it's there. I'm not familiar. Some other qualities of the super soul? The soul is indestructible. Indestructible? Yeah, it's eternal, unborn. Marash. Yes. All pervading. All pervading, yes. Knower of all the bodies. Knower of all the bodies, yes. Advayam is the one without second. Advayam. Okay, yeah. Asat Chakshu, the revealer of the illusionary energy. The what? Asat Chakshu, Maharaj. Meaning? The revealer, the eye of the illusionary energy. Really? The eye of the illusory energy. By the grace of the super soul, we can realize its illusory energy. With the help of the super soul, we can realize the material energy is the illusory energy. Yes? Okay. Okay, we're going to go ahead. Let's see. Prabhupada speaking about the awareness of a liberated soul. The pure devotee can see the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in everything materially manifested. He is present there only as a reflection, but a pure devotee can realize that in the darkness of material illusion, the only light 
is the Supreme Lord who is its support. Right? The Supreme Lord in the form of the Super Soul, we could say, is present there as a reflection. But this is a vision of the liberated soul, seeing the Lord everywhere, in everything, materially manifested. He's present everywhere. But, of course, the Super Soul is only the expansion of the original Supreme Lord in the spiritual abode. He expands himself in the form of the Super Soul, which is present everywhere, in the hearts of every living entity and in every atom. Inferring the presence of the Soul in the Super Soul, verses 12 and 13 help us to understand the presence of the Soul in the Super Soul. Text number 12, the presence of the Supreme Lord can be realized just as the sun is realized. First, as a reflection on water, again, as a second reflection on the wall of a room, although the sun itself is situated in the sky. So Lord Kapila is giving the example about the, the Supreme Lord. The, how he how it compared to the sun and then reflecting on water and you have reflection on water the first reflection and the second reflection on the wall but the sun itself is in the sky so the the supreme lord is is one but he's everywhere in everything just like these reflections purport the example given herewith is perfect. The sun is situated in the sky, far, far away from the surface of the earth. But its reflection can be seen in a pot of water in the corner of a room. The room is dark. The sun is far away in the sky. But the sun's reflection on the water illuminates the darkness of the room. So Lord Kapila is giving this nice example. The room, the material world is dark, but the sun, although it's far away, the reflection can illuminate the darkness. So we say Krishna Surya Sam, Maya Haya and the, Krishna is the sun, Maya is the darkness. Wherever is the light of the sun, there's no darkness. So that was text 12. Then text 13 describes the self-realized soul is thus reflected, first in the threefold ego and then in the body, the senses and mind. The self-realized soul is thus reflected, describing the satyadrik. That was one of the qualities which you gave. With that correct vision, one can engage everything in the service of the Lord. Example of the rose. What's the example of the rose? Who knows? Anyone? Example of the rose? Nobody know? Yeah, then have the ignorance of the rose. Very liberated so. Huh? One person, one person speak. Tell me, the pro what is the example? Yes, come on, you were both speaking, one of you speak. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Is yeah. The example of the rose as, uh, uh, is that the rose can be used uh, by a materialistic person for sense gratification. And uh, the devotee, a uh, uh, has a correct vision, he, uh, and he uses that rose uh, and engages that rose in the service of the Lord, offering it to the Lord. Right, yes. In the material world, the man has a flower, he will give it to his wife. The devotee, he will give it to Krishna. 
So offering everything to Krishna, engaging everything. This is truthfulness. Text 14, although a devotee appears to be merged in the five material elements, the object of material enjoyment, the material senses and material mind and intelligence, he's understood to be awake and to be freed from the false ego. The devotee, well, he's a devotee, right? So being a devotee is not a small thing. You can understand, it's not so easy thing to be a devotee. We have to be free from false ego. We have to be awake, means we're, we're not just dreaming about sense gratification. We're not merged in the thought of enjoying the body and mind. We're free from all these things. We're, we have transcended the material energy. Text 15, the living entity can vividly feel his existence as the seer, but because of the disappearance of the ego during the state of deep sleep, he falsely takes himself to be lost, like a man who has lost his fortune and feels distress, thinking himself to be lost. Right, people are very attached they get a lot of money, and then if they lose it, then they're heartbroken, they feel so bad. Sometimes people, they have money, they do business, and they invest all their money in business, they find out all the money's lost, they've lost everything, they will commit suicide. They can't bear to live without their money. So some people are like that. Prabhupada, Lord Kapila is giving this example, just like a man who's lost his fortune, so he thinks he's lost. So the living entity can feel his existence as a seer. In other words, he understands, he's seeing clearly what is happening. He's not bewildered by it. He actually sees he's not the body, he's not this money, he's aloof from all of these things because it, there's no ego which is there during the, the deep sleep, the deep sleep, the totally, total absorption in the material energy. Then the next text, when by nature, when by mature understanding one can realize his individuality, then the situation he accepts under false ego becomes manifest to him. So he's realized, he's, he's become mature, he's understand what happens, that that money was never his in the beginning. The fortune which he lost was never really his. And the, so he, he can understand his actual nature. He's an individual soul in, this, in the contact with the material energy. <coughs> from Barijan Prabhu's book, Barijan Prabhu is writing about this. He said, Thus, Srila Prabhupada has compared a person's waking life to his Krishna consciousness. Right? When we're actually awake, we'll be in Krishna consciousness. His dream lives one after another to his succession of illusory identities caused by bodily identification and his experience of deep sleep in which he loses his awareness of his individual identity in merging with the Lord's impersonal effulgence. To merging, to merging with the Lord's impersonal effulgence. So, Burijan Prabhu has described his uh, realization of these verses from this chapter that devotee is awake, he understands his situation, but one who's in bodily concept of life is dreaming, is in a deep sleep, bodily consciousness. So Devahuti inquires. Her different inquiries. 
My dear Brahmana, does material, does material nature ever give release to the spirit soul? Since one is attracted to the other eternally, how is their separation possible? Right? The soul is attracted to the body. Is it possible to separate the soul from the body, she's asking? How can there be freedom from the soul, for the soul as long as material nature acts on them and binds them? Even if the great fear of bondage is avoided by mental speculation and inquiry into the fundamental principles, it may still appear again, since its cause has not ceased. So this is Devahuti's fear. That you may, we may get free from the attachment to the material, but we may come back again. This is a problem. We see some people, they come to Krishna consciousness, they've renounced the world, and they go back again, they go back into Maya. They go back and become big sense enjoyers. So Devahuti is asking about this, that we may understand, we may get free of bondage, but again we may become prisoner again. So Devahuti's inquiry, uh, Icha dvesha, in relation to material bondage, this is a, we know these words, Icha and dvesha, Icha, desire, and dvesha, envy. Right? Two kinds of proprietors, two kinds of propensities, propensities arise in their living entity. One propensity is Icha, which means desire to lord it over material nature, or to be as great as the Supreme Lord. Everyone desires to be the greatest personality in this material world. And dvesha means envy, when one becomes envious of Krishna or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One thinks, why should Krishna be the all in all? I am as good as Krishna. So. These two things, Icha Dvesha Samutena Danva Mohina Bharata. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, all living entities are born into this world, are overcome by desire and envy. Desire, our desire, we come in the material world, we desire to be God, or Prabhupada says here, to be as great as God. And Dvesha, envy, we are envious because Krishna is Bhagavan, he has everything. So we think, why should he be Bhagavan? I should be Bhagavan. Like this. These two terms, desire to be the Lord and envy of the Lord, are the beginning cause of material bondage. As long as a philosopher, salvationist or voidist has some desire to be supreme, to be everything, or to deny the existence of God, the cause remains and there is no question, there is no, there is no question of his liberation, right? This is important for us to understand. These other people, big philosopher, uh, big uh, renouncer, avoidist, reject the world. They, they, they all have the desire. The big Buddhist master, they want to become the supreme. The big Mayavadi, he wants to be the supreme. They want to be everything. They're all envious of Krishna. So many people wrote commentaries on Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada said, they're all envious of Krishna. They took Krishna's book and put their own philosophy. They didn't put Krishna's philosophy. But they use Krishna's name, they use Krishna's book to present their own philosophy. They're envious of Krishna. So there may be big renouncers, but they're just envious. They're trying to compete with Krishna. So the example is given that uh, 
the example is here in the Bhagavatam that the honest man is not afraid of the police. So this is in relation to the material energy, that a devotee is not afraid of the material energy. He can be in touch with the material energy, he's not afraid of it. Just like a devotee can deal with money, a devotee can deal with property, a devotee can deal with all the material world because he understands it all belongs to Krishna. He's not thinking it's not mine, it's for my enjoyment. So we don't have to give up the material world. We just have to have the right consciousness. So in this connection, Sridhar Swami comments in this connection that by association with material nature alone, one does not become conditioned. Conditional life begins only after one is infected by the modes of material nature. If someone is in contact with the police department, it does not mean that he is a criminal. As long as one does not commit criminal acts, even though there is a police department, he is not punished. All right? You can be in touch with the police department. We can have friendly relationships with the police department. I remember it in England at the Bhaktivedanta Manor, the police would come and we have very friendly relationships with them. In the beginning it was not so friendly, but later on they became friendly. They saw that we were going to be there, we were maintaining ourselves, and they had, to, they had to work with us. So they would come to the town, we would t tell them about what our philosophy is, and give them books, they would take prasada. Hmm. So the police are coming, doesn't mean we were criminals. Hmm. We can have proper relationships. They're also people, right? The police department are also people. So we can have a relationship with them. Doesn't mean that we're criminals. So the same way devotee can deal with the material world, it doesn't mean he's a materialist. He understands it belongs to Krishna. One, uh, there's a pastime, one man came and brought an, an expensive blanket and some gold coins and he gave them to Jagannath Das Babaji. So Jagannath Das Babaji took them and kept them by his side and the man thought, oh, just see, I thought he was a renounced person, but he's taking these things and he's keeping them. But then later on Jagannath Das Babaji gave them to an elderly Brahmana couple. He didn't want them. He took them to give them away to some pious religious people. He didn't want them for himself. So, like that. Prabhupada used to wear some rings on his finger and some one man criticized, said, what kind of sadhu is this? You've got these rings on your finger. But Prabhupada said, they were given to me by my disciple. My disciple gave me them. I want to engage him in Krishna's service. He said, by putting them on my finger, I'm engaging him in Krishna's service. It's not, that, it's not that I want the ring for myself. I don't need rings. But the disciple gave me them. I never asked him. He just gave me them. So I, I want to engages service in, in Krishna consciousness. Is it clear? Any questions? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, um, regarding the Icha and Dvesha, how it can subtly be manifesting because theoretically we understand that we should not be envious of Krishna and maybe I also feel I am not in use of Krishna, but suddenly how it manifests and how we will understand that um, I have become free from it because it can manifest in so many ways. So how, uh, if you could please elaborate on, on this point. Well, how can, we have to understand desire is going to be there 
we have to purify desire. The purified desire means the desire for the service of Krishna, to, to, to desire in a genuine loving way to give service to Krishna. And envy, how can we get rid of envy? We get rid of envy by developing love and appreciation rather than envy. Instead of looking down and criticizing someone out of envy, we appreciate them and glorify them and praise them. Prabhupada gave the example about the one man, one man was telling the other man, he said, my son has become the high court judge. And so the other man was envious. The other man said, oh, he may be a high court judge, but I don't think he gets the salary of a high court judge. So that's envy. How can we get rid of envy? We can appreciate, oh, very good, your son's become a high court judge. It's very nice. Your, very, your son is very good, He's very great. And so we get rid of envy by developing, appreciate, showing appreciation and glorifying the person. So this is when, when we do devotional service, the more we speak about the glories of Krishna, the more we get rid of envy. Right? When we glorify the Lord, speak about His wonderful qualities and describe His pastimes, Sishupa was always envious of Krishna. Right? He was always trying to compete with Krishna. Sishupal was also very rich and very powerful. Sishupal wanted to marry Rukmini and he was just about to marry her and Krishna came and stole her. And so, yeah, he was really envious of Krishna. He really hated that. And when it came time, Maharaj Yudhisthira was doing the, uh, the Ashwamedha, doing the big yagya, Ashwamedha, Rajasuya yagya, and uh, they wanted to select the most worshipable person for worship, and they select. They wanted to say, select Lord Krishna. But when Sishupal heard Krishna, he stood up and he began to condemn Krishna and criticize Krishna that he's just a cowherd boy. He's just nobody. He's just from the village. He's not a kshatriya. And how you can select him? And you know, he was so envious. He committed so many offenses. So finally Krishna killed him. Krishna tolerated the offenses up to a certain point. And then it came to the point he had to kill Sishupal. So don't be like Sishupal, always criticizing, envious of Krishna. No, see, see Krishna's wonderful qualities and praise them and glorify them. Don't be envious of other devotees. Praise them. See their good qualities. Right? Thank you so much, Maharaj. It is very helpful for the practical work. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, go ahead. Let's see. How Hare one... Krishna. Yes? Hare Krishna, Dandavat. Yes? Maharaj, can I ask... Uh... About uh, Kapil Muni's, uh, one question came to my mind about Kapil Muni's bird. As uh, the picture, it shows that Kapil Muni is uh, very grown up. And, uh, but uh, like immediately after birth, Karda Muni wanted to leave home. And now Kapil Muni also giving um, Siksha to Devahuti. So is there any childhood like pastimes and how he become, how, how old he become or like Shukade Goswami? immediately become a grown-up boy or like that? I don't know, Mariji. I've never heard, we're not told anything. About. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear Mariji. Yes, Mariji. So I'm saying we're not told anything about his childhood. It's not okay. mentioned anywhere about this. But we, as you say, it's true that Kadama Muni left home immediately after his birth. Immediately, I don't know what that means, how quickly he left home. But, you know, it's not certainly uh, not, not an ordinary birth. You know, the Supreme Lord is coming as a child, you know, it's something very special. 
it's not as we think of the, having a child and the, the, all the, 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 the difficulties of raising the child and breastfeeding and everything for a while. We don't know. We're not told anything about his childhood. But we see, we see him teaching. Okay. Okay. We just have to work with what we've got. Lord Kapila appeared a very long time ago and it's not mentioned anywhere. I haven't seen anywhere it's mentioned at all about his childhood or about what happened, how he took birth and what was the situation. So sorry, I can't help you there. Okay, we're going on. Text 21 to 23, describe how we can develop our devotional service. And different points are mentioned. First of all, intense bhakti for a long time. Intense bhakti, right? So we have to do it very seriously. We have to really absorb ourselves in it for a long time. You don't think, you know, oh, it should be, you know, quick, one day, two days. It's going to take some time. You have to work on it. Without desire for fruit of results, we're, we're very attached. Probably, we, Krishna makes this point again and again. Don't be attached to the results. But we are very attached. We're very fruitive. This is the material world. This, we're on this earth planet and this is where we're earning our karma. But Krishna is encouraging us, don't desire to enjoy the results. Become detached to the result. But at the same time, we have to endeavor. So it's quite a contrast. It's really not an easy thing. We're told intense bhakti and intense means we become very attached. We really want results. But then to, don't desire the, the results. <laughs> so this is really a challenge to keep this balance that you've got to work, you've got to work hard and at the same time don't be attached. Don't think you're going to enjoy the result. But then it said prescribe, execute prescribed duties with a pure mind. Do what we're supposed to do. And control the mind. Don't allow the mind to wander here and there. Don't become envious and critical. Don't be duplicitous. Keep the mind controlled. Be honest. Do what we're supposed to do. And then hear about nourishment by hearing about me, hearing about Lord Kapila or Lord Krishna, hearing about the Supreme Lord. We need that nourishment. That's very important for us. Regularly, we have to hear. So that's why we have every day Bhagavatam class. With perfect knowledge and visualization, visualizing the absolute truth. So if we hear regularly, then we will have that perfect knowledge. If we hear from the right source, we'll have that perfect knowledge and we will realize the Absolute Truth. Prabhupada said, just keep reading Srimad Bhagavatam, one day you will see Krishna there, on the pages of Bhagavatam. Krishna will appear through the Bhagavatam. Then, strong detachment. Detachment from sense gratification. Detachment from the the desire to enjoy the material world. The, today's a very good day to pray to Lord Nichananda to develop this detachment from material energy. Austerity. Austerity means giving up pride. Austerity is, this, uh, is important for us. People who are not austere, they're too proud. They're too, they have too much pride. They don't like to do austerity. But austerity is purifying. And it's never given up, even by great souls. Everyone do, can do... What is our austerity? Controlling the mind and senses, giving up uh, the intoxicants and 
these things. This is the austerity. Yeah, by yoga, controlling the mind and senses. This is all part of the austerity. Self-absorption, to control the mind and senses, and then become absorbed in ourself as a soul, detaching ourself from the body. Text 21, how one can develop serious devotional service. Devahuti wanted to know how to get liberated, how to get free from this attachment to the material. He, she's told, do serious devotional service. One can be liberated from all adverse circumstances simply by seriously engaging in devotional service. How this devotional service develops and becomes mature is explained here. The serious devotional service can develop by hearing for long periods of time. Don't think it's going to be so quick. Or Prabhupada said, you have to hear, even before you take initiation from a guru, you're supposed to hear from him for one year, continuously you're supposed to hear from him for one year, and then you're, then you're convinced, then you can think about taking initiation. So that's just initiation, that's just the beginning, but we want to go on and become really serious and get detached and get really purified, we have to hear for long periods of time. Next point, one should associate with devotees, hear from them about the Lord's transcendental appearance, activities, disappearance, instructions, etc. You have to associate with devotees. People often say, I just want to read, I'm just going to read on my own. No. You have to associate with devotees. One devotee asked Prabhupada, what is better Prabhupada, to, be, to, to, to read your books or to be with the, the devotee who is studying the books with him? Prabhupada, it's much better you be with the devotee. And, and the devotee asked Prabhupada, why? He said, because that devotee, he will pull your ear. He will get you to understand. He will get you to read. You sit on your own. You sit and you read, uh, maybe you read something, you, maybe you absorb something, you don't read very carefully, you don't really get much realization, you do some reading, but you get association with devotees, it's powerful. The powerful devotee can purify you, they'll pull your ear, they'll get you to hear, get you to understand. Then one, one, more. one must hear these scriptures repeatedly from reliable sources in order to become fixed in serious devotional service. It's all described here. Very powerful, very important purport here. This. You will have to hear for a long time from the devotees. And we have to hear again and again. You think, oh, I heard this before, I heard this before. No, you have to hear it again. You have, it has to really go in. So many things Prabhupada said again and again, just to make it very clear to us. So what is the conclusion? Through engagement in such devotional service, one becomes free from the contamination of maya. It's the maya, the material energy which is contaminating us, we have to get rid of that. The only process is, the real effective cure for maya is bhakti yoga. And how do we know that we're, we're, we've really developed in Krishna consciousness? It's described in text 22, right? It is said, development of Krishna consciousness is exhibited by proportionate material detachment or vairagya. If one does not separate himself from material enjoyment, it is to be understood he is not advancing in Krishna consciousness. 
renunciation in Krishna consciousness is so strong that it cannot be deviated by any attractive illusion. Get that point? Renunciation in Krishna consciousness is so strong it cannot be deviated by any attractive illusion. The material world has many attractive illusions and if we are illusioned by them, if we are attracted by them, then our renunciation is not very good. It means we were not actually really in Krishna consciousness. So we have to really develop our Krishna consciousness. And where there is genuine Krishna consciousness, there will be this vairagya, jnana and vairag. They are like the gold reserves of Krishna consciousness. And some, sometimes people ask us, how can we understand which process is the best? You know, there are so many different tra uh, faiths and traditions, and different paths. How do we know which one is really effective? So, example was given by one devotee. He said, just like there are different currencies in the world. You have dollars and you have uh, rupees and you have uh, pounds and you have, uh, so, well, all, all these, in Thailand they have bats, they have all these different currencies, in Japan it's a yen, they all have different values. How can we understand the value of these different currencies? It's not that one dollar will be, is equal to one rupee, of course. There's a big difference between the dollar and the rupee. What makes the difference? Well, it's supposed to be based on gold reserves. How much gold do the banks keep in? Nowadays it's not so much based on gold, now it's more based on oil. But you know, tradition, in the past it was based on gold. So different countries have different strengths of gold reserve. So in the same way, in different spiritual processes, there is the gold reserve. And the gold reserve is there in the form of jnana, spiritual knowledge, and vairagya, detachment. These two things will be there in the spiritual process. We have to cultivate them as we practice bhakti yoga that we are developing more and more realization, more and more transcendental knowledge. And with that transcendental knowledge, we have less and less taste for material enjoyment. We have to give up the desire to enjoy the material world. And that should naturally come by Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said he was walking in the street one day in Calcutta, and he met an old friend. And, the, and Prabhupada asked the man, where are you going? The man said, I'm going to cinema. He said, come with me, I'll pay for you to come to cinema. And Prabhupada said, no, 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 I'm not going to cinema. I'm not going to sit in cinema house and watch a movie. He said, even you pay me, I'm not going to come with you. And devotees should be like that. Devotee, even we're offered sense gratification, we have no interest. We're too busy in the service of Krishna. We have no desire to waste our time. Okay, we'll go ahead. Maharaj, is it okay to ask a question? Yes, okay. Go ahead. Uh, uh, many times, I, I, uh, I personally met devotees who may say that... Uh, that kind of renunciation or trying to develop serious devotion service, this kind of fanatism, one should have, be balanced. So I don't understand what does it mean balanced? That is one question. And another question is that um, we practice Yukta Vairagya. So everything we engage in Krishna's service, but how would I know that whatever I'm using it, I may be thinking I'm using it for Krishna, but am I really detached? What is the measure that I would understand that I'm detached? 
you could please help me understand. Well, the devotee told you to be balanced. You should have, you should have asked them, what do they mean by balance? <laughs> They're the one who told you to be balanced, right? We say you should do serious devotional service. The teaching here is you should do serious devotional service. They're saying to you, oh, you should be balanced. What do they mean? Yeah. You should be balanced. You have to consider what is your situation. What do you want? Where are you in your devotional life? You have to be balanced uh, in, uh, to some, some degree of uh, balance is there. You have to consider each and every individual situation and circumstances. Do you have a family? Do you have responsibilities in material life? Do you have children? Or are you in are you an elderly person? Are you retired? What is your situation? You know, it's going to be different for different people. Somebody is single and they have no interest in entering into family life, then it's going to be different from somebody who is in family life. And somebody may be in family life, but they may be very serious about Krishna consciousness. They're not much concerned about career or about the... Uh, developing their economic situation. So it will depend on these different things. It's not, the, what is a balance is not going to be the same for everyone. But in Ishopanishad it mentions one should understand the path of knowledge, transcendental knowledge, vidya and avidya side by side. So you have to understand the nature of the material world. You have to understand the problems of material life, the difficulties which are there, and you have to understand also the, the, the benefits of spiritual life and how to practice spiritual life, how to engage yourself in spiritual activities. So we said you don't have to be afraid of the material world. You don't have to give it up, but you have to know how to use it. And you have to know the dangers of the material world. If you don't use it properly, what can happen to you? So that's a balance there. You, you should have a balance. You should know that how to use the material world properly. And when you don't use it properly, you should understand what's going to happen. So some education is required, spiritual education or Krishna conscious education. How to adjust dealing with the material energy. That's the balance. Yes, I understood. Thank you, Maharaj. But uh, regarding the second question, Maharaj, the Yukta Vairagya, when we try to engage something in Krishna service, I may be thinking that I am using it for Krishna service, but how would I really know I am detached? Yes, well, it depends on every individual, again, the attitude when you're using something. It de it, just like somebody says, you know, I, I need this for my devotional service. I need this, I need a, you know, I need a new car for my devotional service. Or the house I'm living in just now is not enough for my devotional service. I need a bigger house for my devotional service. And, and I need some servants for my devotional service. I need some servants to help me. Then maybe somebody should take care of my children for me so I can be a better devotee. <laughs> you know? Things like that. But it's, it's difficult to know what is the proper level of yukta vairagya. Again, it's going to be different for different people. But the, the principle is that we want to use it for the pleasure of Krishna. And we're not just thinking about our own pleasure. That we understand Krishna is the proprietor and Krishna is the enjoyer. And I'm using this for his pleasure. Uh, without attachment. So, 
we're under, when, by the grace of Krishna, I have this facility, I'm using it for Krishna. This is the idea. Let me use it for Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. It's very clear. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, can yeah. I ask a question? Okay. Adanvat Pranam Maharaj. Maharaj, the question is basically around, uh, uh, if you see the various, uh, you know, stages like Brahmachari, Grast, and then, you know, Viragya, Sanyas and all that. If you see all the three stages, and then we try to correlate the challenges which are there vis-a-vis -vis, uh, monetary, uh, uh, responsibilities, like you said, you know, we cannot have uh, the monkey approach, we have to fulfill our responsibilities also. So, wanted to understand how does, you know, a devotee uh, try to uh, make himself economically, uh, you know, self-sufficient and uh, so that he is able to do his uh, duties to the family also, at the same time, uh, walk the thin rope towards Viragya. So I just wanted to understand that, Maharaj. Yes. So devotees maintain themselves. You know, there's Varna Ashram. There are four Varnas. Brahman, Kshatri, Vaishya, Sudra. One has to take up some particular occupation. What is, according to his occupation, he has to take up some engagement. And that way he can meet his different obligations in the material world. It's not that be, to be devotee means we don't do anything, we just sit and chant all day. One has to work. You have to have a job. You do something. Either you do business or you do work or you're managing or you're doing spiritual practices. You may be, you may be a pujari, you may be worshipping, cook, doing full-time service in the temple or you may be outside the temple working in the job. Or, or, or maybe you do business, maybe you have farm, maybe you have land, you do farming. But somehow or other you have to work, you have to have some engagement. So that's important and that's how the devotee supports himself. And how did... How... Uh, Maharaj, my point was basically, you know, uh, when we get towards the uh, economic fulfillment, then we sometimes go away from the Vairagya concept and then we don't know where to draw the line. So there where the challenge comes through. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well, you, if you get Krishna, is Krishna's kind and he gives you more wealth, that's very good. You, you, you thank Krishna and it, it's a, you can use it for the service of Krishna. You get some wealth, you, you should want to use part of it for the service of Krishna. Example was given about Rupa Goswami, how he divided his wealth. You know, half of his wealth he, he gave for the service of the devotees and the Brahmins. And 25% he, he gave for his family and 25% he kept for himself for emergency purposes. But that was at the time of his retirement, when he was retiring from the material world and going to become a fully renounced person. So you have a good economic situation, you're not pressured unduly financially, then you would want to utilize some of your wealth in the service of Krishna, right? The charity is one of the things which should never be given up even by great souls. And the highest charity is to, be, to give charity for the Krishna Consciousness Movement, to spread Krishna Consciousness, either helping build a temple or maintain a temple or to distribute literature or distribute prasada, some way or other you get some way. We, we have to be careful uh, not to become too much attached to enjoying the economic situation, that we want to become more comfortable. We should want to minimize the material situation, keep it simple, keep it in the mode of goodness. Don't get all 
into luxuries and opulent living. Keep it basic and simple. That is the mode of goodness. So in Krishna consciousness we always put the emphasis on what is the mode of goodness. Because if, if you go into passion and ignorance, then very difficult to come out, to go up, to transcend them. So you have to be co conscious about that, not to always want to increase the material standards. A bigger house, a better car, these things, better schools for the children and so on. You have to, you have to be careful. We get, we get too much entangled in the material world. So try to keep it simple, keep it basic and be satisfied with what is given by Krishna, by honest labor. And when you get good results, don't be afraid to utilize some of the results for the service of Krishna. I don't know if that helps you. Thank you, Maharaj. That was very kind of you to give a very elaborate explanation. My Dhanbrat Pranam to you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we'll go ahead here. Analyze the two main diseases of material contamination. Text 23. Thus, his main diseases are, he wants to be one with the Supreme and he wants to become the Lord of material nature. Karmis try to utilize the resources of material nature and thus become its Lord and enjoy sense gratification. That's the Karmis, right? They want to enjoy the resource. And the Gyanis or the Salvationists, they become frustrated in trying to enjoy material resources. They want to become one with the Supreme or merge into the impersonal effulgence. It's all enjoyment. These are diseases of material contamination. The karmis disease, he wants to enjoy. The gyanis disease, he wants to give up everything, to renounce everything. The devotee simply wants to utilize everything in Krishna's service. Going ahead, answer to Devahuri's question in text 20 about Prakriti, the material energy. Lord Kapila says, Prakriti cannot harm an enlightened soul, right? Because the devotees, can, they can live in the material world. They're not troubled by it. It's not dangerous for the devotee if you're in Krishna consciousness. Because we know it's not ours, it belongs to Krishna's, for Krishna's pleasure. Even if the great fear of bondage is avoided, is avoided by mental speculation and inquiry into the fundamental principles, it may still appear again, since its cause has not ceased. Its cause, the cause is material energy, it's not, it's eternal. So Lord Kapila answers, by discovering the faultiness of his desiring to lord it over material nature, and by therefore giving it up, the living entity becomes independent and stands in his own glory. So, this realization that we have that tendency to want to enjoy, to lord over the material nature, that has to be seen. And then you have to give up that mentality. Lord Nityananda can help us to give up this mentality. Lord Balaram is very expert because he, Lord Balaram, Lord Nityananda, they are Adi Guru, they are the original Guru. They, and the Guru knows how to get rid of this weak, the weakness of the heart. This weakness of the heart causes these kind of problems. Such a person of discrimination is like an, an awakened person who is not affected by a dream. <laughs> right? If you're awake, you don't, you're not worried about a dream because he knows the absolute truth or the elements and he has fixed his mind on Krishna. He rejoices in the Self. Then text 27 talks about mixed devotees. 
we should know well what is a mixed devotee. There are pure devotees and mixed devotees. Right? To become a pure devotee is really not easy. Mixed devotees, however, we can, we're all a bit mixed with different things. A mixed devotee engages in devotional service for the spiritual benefit. Note that. He's a mixed devotee, but he's doing things for spiritual benefit of being eternally engaged in the transcendental abode of the Lord in full bliss and knowledge. That's a mixed devotee. He's thinking about his own liberation. He's thinking about his own bliss and knowledge in the transcendental world. In material existence, when a devotee is not completely purified, he expects material benefit from the Lord in the form of relief from material miseries. Right? We know in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes four kinds of people who come to Krishna consciousness. People come in distress. They want relief from the miseries. So that's a material benefit we want to get from devotional. Then another one, people want gain. Right? We want wealth. I have no money. I need money. I'll go to Krishna. Krishna, give me money. Oh, Dhruva Maharaj wanted a kingdom. He came. He got a kingdom. Other people come in search of knowledge, advancement of knowledge, knowledge of the relationship between Krishna and the living entity, knowledge as to the real nature of the Supreme Lord. So, like the four Kumaras, they came in looking for advancement in knowledge. They knew about Brahman, but they didn't have much knowledge about the Supreme Lord. And so they came to Krishna consciousness. So these are different benefits which make a person mixed devotees. Not pure devotees, mixed devotees. When a person is transcendental to these conditions, he is called a pure devotee. He does not engage himself in the service of the Lord for any material benefit or for understanding of the Lord. His one interest is that he loves the Supreme Lord and he spontaneously engages in satisfying Him. So this is pure devotion. This is what we want to achieve. And then perfection. A devotee's attention is concentrated only upon the eternal loving service of the Lord. Therefore, the power of death has no influence over him. In such a devotional state, a perfect yogi can attain the status of immortal knowledge and bliss. Okay, that's Lord Kapila. Chapter 27 finished. Any questions? Any more questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes? Dandwat Pranam Maharaj. Thank you Maharaj for uh, nectarians. Uh, my question is, uh, we discussed about the qualities. Uh, so one of the qualities talked about stay in secluded places. But we are preachers or we are both and this staying in secret, how do we understand Maharaj this? Well, these qualities were mentioned for jnanis, you see. That was, a, I mentioned the 18 qualities of the jnani, jnani, jnani yoga, the jnana yoga. They have to be in more secluded places. How do we understand this for devotees? For a devotee, it's to stay away from materialistic, common people. We don't like to stay where there's a lot of common people. I said about people cooking meat and televisions. They're up late at night. They wake up late in the morning. Their lifestyle is just the opposite of our lifestyle. You don't really want to be too close to them. Understand? Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Yes? Some more questions?
Anyone? Uh, I, uh, Maharaj, I still have, uh, it's not clear that when one is engaging in devotional service, thinking uh, that I have to progress in my spiritual life, is that still mixed? Uh, because I may not be at the level of uh, liberating or helping other souls, but still I'm trying that I should purify myself still, would that be considered mixed devotional service? Well, yeah, not everybody is a preacher. Not everybody is expected to go out preaching and, you know, we encourage people to preach, but not, we know not everybody's going to be able to do it. The point is, whatever you do, you do it for Krishna. And you have to do something, you have to do some kind of service. And so somebody's worshipping the deity, and somebody's decorating the altar, making flowers, flower garlands. And so that's also pure devotional service. It's up to you. What is your attitude in performing the service? We have to understand everyone's nature and capabilities. Not everybody can be a brahmana. But it doesn't mean they can't be pure devotee, right? There were many pure devotees that are not brahmanas. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaji, Dandavat Pranam. Uh, Maharaji, I have a question like, uh, who are having material desire and worshipping Krishna, they are mixed devotees. But the, for example, uh, some people, as you have mentioned also, that they just want to do bhakti and go to Brahman, Brahma Jyoti. Then in which category they will come? Like they having no material desire, but uh, oneness with God they want. That's my body, the impersonal, right? They want oneness with God, they want to go into Brahma Jyoti, that's impersonal liberation. That's not devotee. Yes, but Maharaj, uh, like, uh, they, but they are doing Krishna Bhakti, like this, as for example, in, in the Parpachala Prabhupada mentioned that um, if somebody is doing Bhakti just to go for Brahman and somebody is Gyan Yogi, the Bhakta will go faster, no sorry, the, the person who worship Krishna to enter Brahma Jyoti will go faster than the Gyan Yogi. That, but he is doing uh, like Krishna's Bhakti just to go to the Brahman. Yes, their idea is to give up the Bhakti. They only do the Bhakti to get out and then they give up the Bhakti because they become one. They think they've become one with the Supreme. So for them Bhakti is not eternal. Bhakti is their means to liberation. It's like that for them. They're not thinking that they'll eternally be engaged in Krishna's service. They're not thinking I'm servant. They're thinking this bhakti is just a means to become one. They're thinking this bhakti is just a method by which I become God and then I give up the worship. Oh, okay, okay. So they, they will be not considered as Brahmavadi, but they will be Mayavadi because they are uh, using Krishna as a stair like that. Yes. A method. Yes, right. They talk about bhakti, but their bhakti is just like that, it's just cheating. Yes. They're not genuine devotee. They're not. Because their motive is to become one. To become one, that means become God. They want to become the Krishna, to become Krishna. So the bhakti is a means to become Krishna for them. Then they'll give up the worship. They put the deity, they worship the deity. And then when they become God, then they give up the deity worship. So not really deity. We say murti puja for them. They don't, they don't have Krishna. Krishna doesn't appear, manifest in their deities. Their deities are just murtis, they're just statues. And they don't think there's any life in their deities. So they have a very different concept. But they speak about bhakti. They speak about bhakti. And they, they use, just like there's many Mayavadi temples, they have Radha Krishna deities, they read Bhagavad Gita, they even chant Hare Krishna, but it's all Mayavadi, all to become one. 
And the bhakti is just temporary, it's a means to become, to get liberation. Yes? Thank you, Maharaj. Thank okay. you, Maharaj. Okay. Any other question? Madhubhakanta? Is it? Have the hand up? Bhakti Priya? Madhuji has a question? Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna, please accept the humble obeisances. Allah Shri Prabhupada Gurudev. Um, Maharaj, um, there are four ashramas, right? Brahmacharya, um, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, and Sanyasa. But um, I understood by from Srimad Bhagavatam, when a person has a husband, I understand how those four apply. But uh, for a single mother like me, how do I prepare myself for Vanaprastha and Sanyasa stage? Like how do I, what, what does it look like for a woman like me? Well, first of all, for women, they don't take sannyas. There is no sannyas ashram for women. It's only for men. And it's not for all men. It's only for a few men. It's not for every man. Right? Sannyas is not for everyone. So you don't have okay. to worry about sannyas. Okay. Vanaprastha, that is retired life. Vanaprastha means usually from the age of 50 or around 50, maybe a bit over 50, you have to, you retire from work and you concentrate on spiritual activities. So, you can do that. You can also think about this. I don't know what age you are, but you can think about it. That at one, some point you want to also become Vanaprastha. Retired, no more material responsibilities, only spiritual responsibilities. So, uh, let's say I'm working now, after I'm, I'm done with work and retired, then I can completely focus on devotional activities and, and it doesn't have to be necessarily traveling, it doesn't have to be necessarily sannyasa, it's just complete devo devotional service. Right. right, that's right. You just do it from my house right now. Right. I don't have to worry about going anywhere. Right. You can do it in your house, yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I had this question and I didn't know what, how to. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, please accept my ambulance. Maharaj, in the, in the means of serving uh, the devotees, is it okay to give the financial help and not expecting anything from them? So, could you please uh, give a proper understanding? Well, giving financial support to devotees, you want to be a little cautious, you want to do it with care, to give qualified people, deserving people, right? Don't just freely give to people because problem is people may take unfair advantage. They see that I can get money from this person, I'll just take money from this person, I don't need to worry, I don't need to worry myself, he's giving, I'll get more money from him. And this way, I will live nicely, I will live comfortably at his expense. It's, uh, you, you should be cautious. You give to devotees, you want to be guided by, you should, you might want to check with the temple authorities about this, if this is actually a good thing or not. If they, what do they think about it? Because they may know better about the person. You know, if you, do, if, it would depend a lot on how well you know the person you're giving the money to. You should know how they're going to use the money, and you should know that they're going to f use that money fully in Krishna consciousness, and they won't just take an unfair advantage and become lazy and become extravagant 
because of your financial support. You don't want to encourage devotees to become lazy or to become extravagant, waste money. You don't want to encourage them in luxurious living. You want, you know, it's good for devotees, it's good for all of us to live simply. To pra we practice simple living, high thinking. And we need to minimize our demands. Now, the, our, the, we can, if we think somebody is going to pay for everything, then we can become very extravagant. We want more and more. So you have to be cautious. You have to be careful. There may be better ways to use your money rather than give it to devotees. There may be some better ways. Thank you, Maharaj. <clears throat> Maharaj, and I have another question regarding this mixed devotion service. So, those devotees who are uh, want to have an eternal relationship with the Lord and for the sake of spiritual benefits, it is mentioned for the sake of spiritual benefits. So, and they want, they, that's, the, that's why they are engaging in the service of the Lord. Means they don't have the pure, eternal, loving attitude towards the Lord. So, but still, they are also promoted to the spiritual kingdom and they are also engaging in that. And uh, without love, how can one go there, Mara? Without love? Yeah. Well, without love, I don't know that you can go there without love. Mixed devotees, I don't think they can go to the spiritual world. They would like to go to the spiritual world, but it doesn't mean that they go. You have to see what Krishna thinks. Krishna is the one who, who makes the final decision who's going to go there and who's not. The, does it, uh, the mixed devotees, our terminologies are termed because they, it happens, they become a devotee for just reaping the material benefits is okay, but they want to reap the spiritual benefits also, Maharaj. It's the, the, the the desire is to have the spiritual benefit. It, it is nothing wrong that to have a spiritual benefit. Mm, yes. You say there's nothing wrong to have spiritual benefit. We have, to, we have to see how much they really want Krishna. Are they only thinking of themselves or are they thinking of Krishna? You see, they're thinking of them, they see, it's more like they're just thinking about themselves, what I want. Why do they want to go to the spiritual world? They don't seem to care very much about Krishna. They're only thinking, what's good for me? So that concept of the self is there. That's not good, right? Devotees shouldn't just be thinking only about them, their own self. We must, we have to think, what does Krishna want? Could you please explain this, Maharaj? Because, for example, we are following the rules and regulations. Uh, these are all done for the pleasure of Krishna only. But if we have, we can also do it just for the sake of following and not please Krishna also. It means there is subtle difference. Yes, there's a difference, right? So, I said it again, it's the attitude. What is our attitude? Are we following just for the sake of following? Are we really doing it for Krishna? We've got to develop the attachment to Krishna. We've got to develop the taste for hearing and chanting about Krishna. It's not we just follow and I want to go there, I want to go back to Godhead. Why you want to go back to God? Oh, there's too much suffering here in the material world. I want to go to the spiritual world. It's more 
easier life, better life. You know, that's not a very good reason. I don't think that's going to help us to go back to Godhead. We've got to really develop an attachment to Krishna, to Krishna and Krishna's service. But Krishna has given the, uh, like, uh, benediction to Putana and many, many histories like that. Well, Putana was very fortunate. Who was she in her pre... You know, she had somehow, she had some piety that she could personally meet with Krishna. She was not ordinary. We cannot compare ourselves to it like that. We can't say, well, Putin got there, why shouldn't I get... <laughs> no, she, she had... You, we don't know what she did or what was her position from the previous lifetimes. What is our position? Yeah? Yes, Maharaj, it's a question. Pure devotees never think that they want to go to the spiritual world. They just engage in the eternal loving service of the Lord. They don't worry where they are. They want to be. That's right. They don't have any desire. Even spiritual desire also they don't have. Just what they want to serve. Yes. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Who is this? Delhi? Doctor? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanurath uh, Pranam. I was talking to some people whom I felt uh, were my worthies and I was trying to understand from their point of view. So they were saying that uh, their intention of uh, merging uh, with the Supreme is complete surrender. The different definition was that they don't want to be God, but they want to remove the concept of self. And once they remove the concept of self, the ego is automatically removed. And once their ego is removed, their surrender is 100%. And since their surrender is 100%, then they look for uh, merging with the Supreme. So this was the definition which was given as a counterpoint. So I just wanted to understand from you, Maharaj. Yes, we have a different concept. Our concept is that the, there's, it's, it's not complete negation of the Self, but we should understand the actual position of the Self. That the Self is part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. We have an eternal relationship with Him. And that, that ego, it's not that to make it completely void, but it's purify the ego, pure ego. The pure ego is to understand I am the servant of Krishna eternally. It's the relationship of the master and the servant. This concept that 100% that, that surrender to Krishna, that's all right, that's good. But what does surrender mean? Surrender means to take up the service of Krishna. It doesn't mean to stop everything, but if they're talking about merging, becoming one, there's no activity. What are they going to do? Nothing? Just merge into the oneness? Give up their individuality? We're etern we are eternally individuals. And they, they're talking about selflessness, become selfless. No, we're always existing. The very first instruction given by Krishna. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future will any of us cease to be. So we're all eternally individuals. And they cannot give up that individuality. But their idea of merging is to give up that individuality, to lose that individual. And that is the problem. They enter into that oneness, there's no activity, they will simply stay there for some time and come back to the material world. So their liberation is theoretical only. It is not actual practical liberation. 
Thank you, Maharaj. That was very nice. And really, that you quoted from Bhagavad Gita, you know, never was there a time when we did not exist and never will be there a time we will not exist. That answers it all. Thank you, Maharaj. I'm done with Pranam to you. Hare Krishna. Yes. Okay, any other questions here today? I don't think so. All right, so we'll stop here today. Have a good Nityananda Triodasi. We'll meet tomorrow. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.